Hello and welcome back to match three here today on Versus Live. We are putting Todd's Teamer Reclamation deck through the ringer of three decks that I think will show up this weekend at the SEG Tour stop in Indianapolis. So far, you have lost to a Sultai Midrange deck, you have defeated Mono Red Aggro, and now you have to play against the deck with main deck counter spells. Yeah, so the 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 Sultai deck, I think, was more of me not having uh, enough in the way of like sweeper effects to to clear like these large board states and after sideboard you having access to both negate and duress was pretty problematic on top of something like vivian reed which can uh just be a huge problem for things like primal amulet so uh, a lot of different things moving pieces there and a lot for me to consider uh when moving forward with the archetype the mono red deck oh even then i think out of the we played six games and i think i won two yeah uh, you won two out of five actually Two out of five, sure. Even the mono red deck we played four, and I won three out of four. I think that's promising. Yes. Um, and then uh, if if the mono red decks continue to be built like light up the stage frenzy, very heavy on the uh, grindy elements, there's a chance that you know the matchup's actually just good for me because I'm 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 functioning a lot like a combo deck, but um, I'm built in such a streamlined way that I can just use my ops and my radical ideas and just dig for removal spells, and that will end up buying me enough time to get. Uh, Wounders Reclamation off the ground. Well, your removal spells are not going to do a whole lot in this matchup. You say that. my main deck Chromium and no other creatures. That's fair. You say that, but we played a fun game earlier. Not going to spoil it, but I, I, I killed a lot to fairies with, with Light yes, Strike. That is true. <laughs> so, uh, the, the, so the downside on, on this matchup is that the control decks have main deck counter spells. That's yeah. rough. But I also have a bunch of main deck removal spells I don't do squat. Yeah, Kai's Wrath. Uh, not particularly contempt. good. Right. Warren, Warden is just Warden. Not really a constructed level magic card. No, but it's not that bad. And the fact that you have that option, I think, is one of the stronger aspects of Warrant Warden. Obviously, Azori Charm would be ideal in this scenario because yes. you could just cycle it and draw a card. But having the backup of your removal spell being a way to pressure your opponent in a matchup where your removal is bad is going to be the reason why Warrant Warden is actually just like a constructed all-star, I think. Yeah, it's definitely a, a good, just a nice luxury to have. Also makes sideboarding easier. I have fewer cards that are complete bricks that need to come out. Right. So I think this game one is going to really come down to how many of those brick cards I draw versus how many of the gas spells you, you're able to find. You're more able to dig for your big spells, your uh, primal amulets, your reclamations, your explosions, um, and, and see which one of us can sort of run the other person down. Uh, but I think the game's going to be pretty long. Our fun game was quite long. Yes. Um, I think the, the biggest takeaway, though, is going to be um, that Growth Spiral would be very good in this matchup, whereas Lightning Strike is going to be rather poor. But I think the flip-flop is true for something like Monored or even Golgari. So, I, you know, there's a lot of give and take. And uh, I think you're going to see me with, like, a couple of stuck burn spells in hand this, this game, and it's not going to look good. But uh, before we get started, let's take uh, a couple questions from uh, Twitch, Twitch chat. I need them to send some into me. Oh, come on. Come. There's, like, 1,400 of you in the chat, and you just can't ask a question? Come on. Come on. Don't, you know, he picks the same five guys all the time, you know? Freaking, hey, they ask good questions. Yeah, who was it? Histeus? just always in here, always asking good questions. Every single, every single week, Histeus gets his name called out. You know, I don't even think he subs to here, but I think he subs to me. So, come Thanks, on, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Pull, pull at SCG tour in the chat. Bathrobe Type. king. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Jim Davis comment. That's a nice one. Okay, uh, Ross, what do you think now that KCI is banned in modern? Thumbs up. Yeah, same. Get, get that deck out, get of here. out of here. It broke the rules, okay? Literally abused a rule that was created 20 years ago for floating mana overpaying for while announcing a cost for a thing. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's gone. Thank, thank you. Get out of here. Thank you. Not a card that should exist. Ken Trio wants to know, what do you think of Brian Gottlieb's Nexus Gates deck? Friends don't let friends register Gates. Next question. Wow. Have you even seen the deck in action? Yeah, that blue card that draws a bunch of cards is pretty pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, draw a lot of cards. Yeah, but so also the the sweeper is pretty good too. Registering that many gates is. I agree, the gates Oof. are not ideal, but with Wolf's reclamation, it undoes a bit of it. Oof, it undoes a bit it's of a it. Tough sell. 
It's with a lot gross of gates. spiral, a lot of, a lot of times putting in your land taps is not a big deal on gross spiral. And the deck plays enough uh, other lands where yeah, you it's can like turn twelve or fourteen gates and, and yeah, ten or twelve others, something yeah. like that. It just uses them kind of like um, quasi spells when com- combined with various. Yeah, things. they did make the gate cards really powerful this time. Yeah, but that's a lot of gates for your constructed deck. It's true. Gates of Blaze though. Gates of Blaze ain't bad. I like that card a lot. I gotta roll. We this. got one from Robert. No, no, I lost. lost. Yeah. Right. Todd, aren't you insane for no ghost spell of this deck? It seems like usually there's a problem of ramping into being stable anyway. Have you watched the games? I'm not losing the games where uh, I'm losing the games where I don't kill stuff or whatever, like or or missing land drops. I am not losing the games where I'm not hitting my things on turn four. Once I cast Warner's Reclamation on turn four, that is the ramp card. I don't need to ramp to the ramp card. Grow Spiral, I think, is is a fine card. That could be really good in this deck, but the thing is more important to interact with your opponent in the early turns. Okay. There you go. All right, let's play some magic. I got a Golish. Asper Control versus Team of Wreck. Last match of the day. I don't really want to get this negated, so I'm going to... 18. I think I'm going to negate your opt. Syncopate, sure. Whatever. Yeah, I might syncopate it. Yeah. Uh, I just need lands plus lightning strike. is nerd geared. Hmm. I have my best play. Search for Escanto. Be able to dig for my relevant cards. Pretty good. Go. Upkeep. Washa. That one's bad. <laughs> you also, notably, get to make sure you hit your land drops and also get rid of stuff like Kai's Wrath yeah. and Vraska's Contempt. Faster. All right. Radical idea. Sure. That would be a nice one to syncopate. Yeah. Oof. Ross, what are your thoughts on Kaya in an Esper Control sideboard from Ken Gyro? What, you, what is it doing? 16 me. Well, Kaya, the yeah. one that the planeswalker that just exiles graveyards and gain, you know, or the one that exiles one one mana permanence. Are you you're just good. passing? Yeah, go. Yeah, I, just, I just don't know what it's doing. Um, That's the big thing. No one knows why you would do a thing. You have to give us the reason why you're doing the thing. Why did you shock? Because I want to play this and opt. That makes sense. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to consecrate that radical idea, and I don't really want to save it for a chemistry's insight. I think I just want to dig towards better cards. So let's spin that one and get closer to transforming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will play an island and pass. All right, I'll play not. I'll keep the land. I will play radical idea. And I will discard. Uh, shock. All right, I'm just going to kind of wait on Ross to make the first move because my hand is pretty good. I don't really need to rush. Your turn. And a turn, revitalize. Sure. Go to 23. 23, 16. Upkeep, trigger search. That's just, I, eh, I played the wrong line. I'm stupid. I'll keep that one and pass. Okay. I'll play an opt. Yep. Bottom of shock. Shot could help me get rid of Teferi in a weird spot, but I don't think I really need to do that. All right, stop me around tap. Your turn. Search. Don't need that land. Draw. Play a planes and a Teferi. I will negate said Teferi. What? What? It's almost like I put him in my deck for just this exact reason. That's not fair. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, Not quite. Game's over. Hmm. Wreck in a turn float to untap. Uh, I'm going to blast you for four and draw four. So you're at 19. Yep. Okay. And I have to discard a card. Looking to discard a shock land. In this godless shrine. Mm hmm. Play this land tapped and pass the turn. Well, that's not good news for Ross. No answer to the reclamation. Probably just a couple of counter spells in hand. Um, let's go. We'll play Primal Amulet. Absorb. All right, I'm going to let that happen. That's fine. I go to twenty-two. All right. Um. 
Move to untap trigger. Yep. Pull it three. Untap. Spin the fourth. I'll play chemisters. Yep. Draw two. All right. Here we go. Leaves me with seven. It's good. Trigger search. Yep. I uh, already have seven here, but I don't really need this land, so we'll bend that. Transform. Draw a card. Mm -hmm. Play a drowned catacomb and pass a turn. Um, Chemister pitching a breeding pool. Yep. And radical idea. Draw. Harbor. Primal amulet. Response. All this can't it. Sure. I will absorb primal amulet. I will. Does he have two left after that? Yep. So I don't really want to let him get syncopate off here if he has syncopate as like his last card. But I don't really want to use uh, an expansion when I could just explosion for a lot in a few turns. Uh, but I think getting this primal amulet active is pretty important here since he has Escanta going. So I'll copy your absorb and target your absorb. Okay. You got a 19. 19. Okay. Amulet resolves. Okay. Um, I will try to move to end step. Yep. All right. Float two. Draw two. Yep. Draw two. Um, so he still only has two. So I think I want to just transform the amulet now before. I, don't, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out like what bad can actually happen, but uh, we'll play chemistry out the grave. Discarding a steam vents and um, opt bottom. Now, field of ruin would be rather annoying, but I have you know plenty of stuff, so I'm okay here. Uh, discard yeah, million cards. Yeah, your turn. Another reason why I use the uh, explosion or the expansion to use as a counter spell is because it's only uh, it still leaves me with two left in the deck, and I had two chemisters in sight as like big card draw to potentially find it. So. Activate this, can't it? Yeah. So here he's looking for mortify or counter spell, both of which could save him, but I don't think chemistry is going to do it, sir. Pass the turn. Might as well use the wellspring mana. Shock you for four. Eighteen. I have you at 19 right now. I don't know. Am I wrong? What do you got him at? Uh, I was off, apparently. I was no, the chat there. you're wrong. I, I added my absorb, to. You're right. I'm at 15. Okay. Now, at this point, we might actually just be able to burn him out with shocks and lightning strikes if we want to. But I think just pushing super far ahead on, let's see, so it's 6, 10. Hmm, maybe. Uh, just keep forcing his hand. If he has counter spells, keep on putting a lot more pressure on him. Problem is, counter spells don't actually stop uh, both halves of this. That's fine. So you go to 18? Yep. Um, I will play another Reclamation. Sure. During... In step, two triggers on the stack. Put a special mana, so two total. I don't have it yet. So I still got one of these on the stack. I guess I'll float all again. Tap. Two, so special two specials and ten others. Yeah. So let's go two, four, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So let's use four 
to, or sorry, yeah, four to cast a chemist's regular. You should have actually mana counters out there. That might make it easier for people. Yeah, okay. So let's go only blue and red because I don't have green instant speed. Let's do five and five. So we'll go. Then we got this for Wellspring mana. Sure. All right, we'll use one of the Wellspring mana and uh, see two of the red. One of the blue. Chemisters. This is for four cards. Four cards. Yep. One, two, three, four. And then let's go four, eight, nine. So six, nine. Two specials. Explosion you for... 12, 14, so 10, 10 three 30. Times, so 30 you, and you draw 30 cards. I guess you can hit absorb. Actually, so the first one targets you, and then the copies, uh, I'll do you take damage, I'll draw 10. One, two, three, four. Five. So the first one that's going to resolve, you'll draw 10, and then the second one that goes to resolve. Mm -hmm. So I'll draw 10 on the first one, and then you draw 10 on the second and third one that are resolving. Okay. So, okay, so I'll draw you 10. You draw 10. And then... No, if the second one resolves, you die. Oh, yeah, that's true. So you're at 18. So if you don't have the absorb, you're dead. Right. But Could have also had a syncopate. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so the second one kills me. I am dead. Well, syncopate would not... Well, syncopate would count oh, one, yeah, one, but, but then, then the third would one would still kill you, so you need... Absorb was the only thing that really could save you, but as long as you didn't have it in hand... Yeah. You have to stack it weird because of the way the copies work. So when you cast the original spell, you need the one on... It's going to be the one on the bottom of the stack, right? So uh, the two copies come in on top, and you're going to choose the second one to be uh, Ross twice because you don't want to deck yourself because I only had 18 cards left. And then the one on the very tip top, you're going to make yourself draw 10. So you draw 10 first, hit him for 10. The second one, he's at 8 life. The second one's going to kill him and let him draw 8 cards unless he has a counter spell in hand, but then the third one should kill him. It's a little complicated, but that's that's how it goes. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to touch on something real quick. Yeah, what's up? Uh, so we had a kind of a discussion in, in chat about this Esper list and why you were only playing uh, two Mortifies, Ross. Uh, somebody was commenting that there's a, seems like there's a lot of enchantments that you want to be able to kill in this format and that the deck might not be as good with less than four. Um, is there a reason you chose to play two? I mean, it, it's... It's not a list that I built. This is just from Magic Online, but there's a lot of different threats you need to answer. Like Warden Warden, I think, is important against aggressive decks to have that two mana piece of interaction. You've got Kaya's Wrath as a sweeper. You want to play Vraska's Contempt so you could deal with Planeswalkers. Like maybe the Eldest Reborn is a little awkward in this deck as a five mana sorcery, and that's where you find room for more Mortifies. That that's probably where I would look. But I mean, it's hard to fit four of a single removal spell in your control deck because you need to cover so many different bases. Um, and if you overload on one single type of interaction, then you leave a hole elsewhere. So it's really just about finding the right balance. Maybe you want a third, maybe you do want a fourth, but if the metagame is that enchantment heavy, but we're obviously like, you're seeing it in a matchup where Mortify would be miles better than any other removal spell. So, right. like, you, you, but then you, you play against Rekindling Phoenix and then yeah. you have a freaking third Mortify <laughs> instead of the, the thir second or third Vraska's Contempt. And then you just get clowned by it because. Yeah. You know, the, there are so many unique threats on standard that you can't just have four of one for the other. Like, I mean, I know I say that, but I have four shock for lightning strike. But these are also integral to like the stra the strategy of buying me time in the early turns of the game. Whereas Ross is trying to have the right answer over the course of 20 turns, not just the first five or six. You know, he's setting up for like a Teferi, but that Teferi is just a cog in the wheel that is his control deck. Yes. So. That's where I am on Mortify. I All can right. definitely see an argument for more, though. Yeah, I mean, the first iteration of the, the Esper deck we built, like, two weeks ago or whatever, I had four Mortify in my deck, and I honestly, it didn't feel that great because I just kept killing creatures that kept getting two-for-ones or whatever, but that was just, like, one matchup. So, obviously, Mortify is a very strong card, but you have to have the right balance of removal. Yep. So. All right, well, we're going to take a short three-minute break here while we prepare our sideboards for Game 2 between Esper Control and Team of Reclamation. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And welcome back to sideboarding here at Versus Live, playing Esper Control against Team of Reclamation. 
on my side, we are doing a lot. You saw the cards that we're bringing out were clogging my hand in game one because they really just don't do a lot. It's cutting a lot of the removal. The Warrens come out, the Kai's Wrath come out, the Vrasic Contempts, the Settle. Then I'm trimming one Elders Reborn to fit in the 12 cards I want to uh, bring in. Ixalan bind Ixalan's Binding should be a great removal spell to deal with the Todd's wonky uh, non-creature permanence. Uh, Disdainful Strike and Negate are obviously great. Thief of Sanity is a good little change of pace threat that forces Todd to leave in some removal that he might otherwise cut. And if it goes unanswered, it can be a just game-winning card. Deputy Detention will function a lot like Ixalan's Binding, but another card that punishes Todd if he trims on removal. And then these Consecrate Consumes are going to function as an early cantrip just to dig through my decks, smooth out my draws, but tagging Radical Idea or Chemistry's Insight is really good. Yep. And the backside of Consume is really nice because it gives me a backdoor way to answer creatures that Todd will bring in to try to punish me for cutting my removal. Right. So I have my I have my creature removal all on cards that do other things. I've got two Mortifies in the main deck that can deal with... Uh, Wilderness Reclamation that can answer a creature. I'll now have three copies of Consecrate Consume that can answer a creature and still the one Elder Reborn that I didn't have room to bring out. Mm -hmm. So I actually have six answers to a niv Mizzet without having some sort of mopey uh, card that really only functions as a, as a creature removal spell. Right. Uh, and actually, Excellence Binding and Deputy. So I actually have ten answers to a niv Mizzet. Right. Without yeah, even yeah. really trying. You, I don't even know if you're counting Mortifier or not. But yeah, I am. You. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's all interesting. Like you, I mean, I, I'm kind of in the opposite boat where I don't actually have removal that's versatile to leave in my deck, but I need to make sure I don't lose the things like Thief of Sanity. Lightning Strike and Shock are, you know, roughly the same card in this matchup, except Lightning Strike can kill Deputy Detention, which I think could be important out of sideboards. Um, also, uh, being able to double up and kill Teferi is a pretty big deal, whereas double up on Shock doesn't. Yeah. Um, and that, that actually came up quite a bit in our um, uh, pre-video match or game that we played. Uh, so the sideboard plan here, uh, basically just a couple of uncounterable nibs. Uh, these are just really tough for the control decks to beat. They're going to be setting out a lot of their removal. Game's going to go pretty long. Uh, if I ever get to cast it with an active wilderness reclamation, I don't think I can possibly lose. Just draw a million extra cards and shoot Ross for a million damage. Um, two more negates coming in as just complimentary to the front two. And I just want to say this about negate. I don't love it in this deck. I think it's a necessary evil to protect myself from opponents who are going to be trying to hit me with various forms of disruption in game one that I can't normally beat. Uh, we saw in game one, like Ross was like willy nilly tap out for Teferi. And then I just got to resolve reclamation and they died. Yeah. And, and like, you can see a lot of games that way. The perfect card, the one that I've been trying to search for and figure out, um, has already rotated. Supreme Will would have been the perfect card for this deck, a way to dig for your combo pieces as well as protecting you from uh, opposing annoyances like Teferi or Vivian Reed or whatever. Um, so the goal for me at this point is basically finding the card that's basically the best split card for this slot that does something similar. Um, right now, I just have Negate because it it you know it's there. It's it's cheap. It does a thing. It's not good. Is there any merit to you wanting Spell Pierce to maybe be able to resolve your threat a turn earlier? Yeah, I mean, playing a Spell Pierce could be good, or two couple, or a couple main deck. Um, I know that there were uh, there was at least one 5-0 that had two Spell Pierce in the sideboard, and I could definitely see adopting that in the, the main. I think the problem is, um, you know, if, if you get to turn 5, there's a chance your opponent just has 5 mana up for their absorb, yeah. and then Spell Pierce doesn't do a whole lot, so... You know, there there's always that that potential consequence of, of playing something like Spell Pierce instead of Negate, like a hard counter versus a soft one. Um, and we're not really applying any pressure to you otherwise, so Spell Pierce just doesn't seem easy, easy to play good. around. Yep. Um, if your opponent knows it's there, it's awful. Whereas if your opponent knows Negate's there, it's a lot harder to play around. Anyway, uh, we're going to be cutting shocks. None of the removal cells are all that good, but we're going to keep in some of the lightning strikes. I'm, I'm considering treasure maps and, and Rowl, but if we if Ross just casts a Thief of Sanity, we're going to die. So... We need to kill it. Right, the so, uh, the well, dynamic of if they know it's coming, it's bad, and you don't want to draw it, makes me want to have one one spell pierce. Sure. Yeah. Plus, I can always discard it. Anyway, what's up? Uh, Pied Piper had a question. Uh, what do you thought? What do you think about ego in the sideboard of, of decks like this? Unmoored ego. Yes. I mean, if Wilderness Reclamation becomes a huge deal, I think Unmoored ego could be a really sweet sideboard option. I mean, yeah. all, those cards have traditionally been very good against linear combo-esque strategies, which is why I think it's important for the Reclamation decks to have some backup plan, especially after sideboard. Like, Unmoored Ego in game one, if you just name Explosion, the only way I can win 
is copying lightning strikes and shocks and stuff over and over again. Um, whereas in, in game two, though, I have two Niv and I probably have Murmuring Mystic and some other stuff. You know, it's, it's a lot harder for that card to just cold me, especially when I have two engine pieces with Reclamation and Primal Amulet. So it just gets a lot harder for a card like that to be detrimental when everyone's already diversifying their threat package after sideboard anyway. One more. What we got? Uh, is Niv Mizzet worth main decking from Aetherbringer? I had it in one of my lists last Tuesday, and it was expensive. I think if you play you ready? ramp spells, it's good. No, my hand's not good. It's not good. Do you want to mulligan it? I'm going to keep mine, and my hand is... Yeah, I'm going to mulligan six. It was potentially keepable. It was like Hinterland Harbor opt no other land, so it wasn't good. Yeah. But it's hard for me to mulligan hands with opt, just in general. I hear that. Yeah. Might have cast more ops this year than any other person. Maybe. Have you met the man Jonathan Rossum? <laughs> that he man hates opt. What? I thought he played opt in all the Jessica decks. No. Oh. oh, maybe not. I believe that was Nikolic. Right? Benjamin Nikolic. There it He's is. He's occasionally played opt, but not that often. Oh, no. I played opt in Blue Moon, and I played four of them. I'm going to go with six again because I just can't hit lands. I mean, to be fair, Caleb and Paul have played Storm all year, and I'm pretty sure they've Oh, yeah, they always True. The they have like two or three, but they recast them a lot. Two or three. I thought they were playing four. So they maybe they've been at four sometimes. They change it. They tweak whenever they a lot. Whenever they up reman, they usually upped opt or vice versa. Well, opt is great. Right. Being innocent is sweet. But I mean, like, on the whole, if you're playing all like at sorcery speed for the most part, uh, it's not as good as sleight, sleight of hand. hand. Yeah. Yes. We got another question over there, Rob. Uh, yeah, why only twenty five lands and no water grave in the Esper deck? Oh, I would like to see twenty six lands in most of my control decks, but sometimes the, we've seen them go to twenty five and have some early cantrips. But I generally am a fan of. High land counts. Oh no. Um, I wish this was a land. Uh, I'm going to main phase an opt before I play this. Yeah. As for No Water Grave, I think it's control decks that have an easier time trimming on shock lands. You really only need one shock land, and then all these check lands enter untapped. So, uh, you can go. Uh, so you, you almost want to have all 12 of them in your control decks, and if what, like one or two need to enter tapped early before you find a shock land, that's fine. Messed up. Oh, that's a land, but not a great one. Yeah, land at this point is just good. Yeah. Uh, radical idea. Sure. Go. <laughs> yeah, I... Ah. Uh, I feel like I messed this one up pretty good. But I don't think it mattered that much. A little light on lands because we mulligans. Is it land? No, it's like, but it's the best cantrip. But I don't think I can afford to tap two mana if I brick. So we'll bin that. I would like to tag that radical idea, but okay. Well, we hit a land, so I'll shock and pass. All right, eighteen. Uh, eighteen. Also. Eighteen. Go. And step chemistries. I'm gonna negate it. Try to keep Ross off of lands. We want to. I'm going to use our mana efficiently. Uh, it is two. a land. Pass the turn. I'm going to radical pitching a lightning strike. Yep. Go. On uh, your end step, I will cast a revitalize. Sure. I go to 21. I was thinking about chemistry with it, but I think I can hold off on that. And this gets me a little closer to flipping the search as well. Mm hmm. Chemistry is basically a break even when you're doing it from the graveyard on search. That one can go there. Uh, play a tap Godless Shrine and pass. Right. Chemistry. That is fine. Um. I have a feeling if I go for a thing, I'm going to lose a counterfight to absorb negate. 
And then he's going to play Teferi, and I'm going to get clobbered. So I'm just going to say go and kind of sit on my hands for a turn. We can keep that one. Uh, I will now play a Teferi. All right, I'll negate it. Pass the turn. Okay. I will play a Wilderness Reclamation. Disdainful Stroke. I will negate that. Jesus. All right, How many uh, negates do you have? I didn't step. Quite a few, turns out. And I will pass turn. I drew three, but I missed some land drops, so, you know. Let's put this in the yard and flip our Ascanta. Draw for turn. Activate as Kanta. Sure. Ugh. Yep. That's the turn. Kim Sir's pitch lightning strike. Sure. So Ross, question about the uh, uh like two turns ago when you cast the fairy. Why did you cast the fairy that turn? Because I had a counterspell back in case Todd had negate into a thing on his own turn. It's going to like take a lot of time for me to get enough mana to actually to ferry plus two counterspells to resolve it through a negate. And by that time, I'll have his Kanta going and won't want to commit that mana. Um, so to ferry there, even though um, I thought it was safe enough because Todd was going to have to have counterspell for it, untap, play a big thing, counterspell for my counterspell, and I just got punished. Um, is another Reclamation even worrisome. I think at this point Todd has a million mana and I'd rather just focus on countering his threats, so I'm going to let that resolve. Okay. Um, float three on tap. Yeah. Um, float seven on tap. Yep. Uh, last one's still on the stack. No. No, I've already... Okay. So I have ten floating... Yes. I'm going to go 8 floating. Pitch a breeding pool. Yep. Uh, hit you for 9 and draw 9. Absorb. Uh, sure. I go to 24. Uh, your turn. How many cards in hand? 3. Uh, pass turn. I main phase this can to last turn because I could have mortified the reclamation and had a counter spell up. But at this point, with two reclamations, I'd rather just have all my mana up. Uh, I will disdainful stroke that. Okay. Um, breeding pool on tap. Floating a sure. Whatever. Float a million mana. Leaving this on tap. Passing the turn. Can I afford? You have three in hand? Uh, yes. We've already used three negates. I don't think I can afford to sit here. So I think I just go for it. I'll activate a Scanta. Yeah. You still have a negate that I know about, right? Uh, yeah. Seems two and three get significantly this harder here. <laughs> this card does not seem very good. <laughs> But neither does like Sphinx's Insight or Search for Escanta. Sure. I mean, I guess Insight is probably the best. Yeah. I mean, you still have a chemistry you just haven't cast in yeah. 15 turns, though. So. But look, the Syncopate's just going to do nothing. You have too much mana. Yep. That's an interesting card. I think I might have punted this game. I think I burned my negates a little too willy nilly. I also think the turn I played the second reclamation, I should have forced with. I will play Thief of Sanity. Okay, pass the turn. All right, you have negate. I'm just going to concede. I have okay. just I, one spell in hand that you have negate. And oh yeah, I have negate absorb. So you didn't want to give him a chance to get a, his own wilderness reclamation off the thief. <laughs> the uh, the problem uh, from from my side from that game, the uh, early bottleneck on mana. I used the negate when I didn't have to slash need to. 
Um, I was kind of trying to put Ross in panic mode because he was a little light on lands too, and hopefully he was like going to tap out for Teferi on five and then try to untap and hold him to gate. But just ended up that I only have access to four total negates after sideboard, and I use three of them, so the odds of me sticking my actual win conditions is pretty tough at that point um, when he has so much mana and so much filtering and so few actual dead cards after board. So definitely something to learn there is that I think you just never fight over chemisters and stuff like that especially after sideboard your negates are just too valuable yeah with neither player able to really apply significant pressure the games are going to go really long any early mana screws are going to get drawn out of yeah. almost assuredly which means the game is going to come down to a few key counter wars over important cards so you need to save your counter spells for the, the counter wars over those cards the turn where i played the second reclamation i overvalued it and i thought you had to counter it and instead you let it resolve, and then my turn was basically wasted. And if yeah. I played Primal Amulet, it would have forced your hand a little bit. I actually could have... Would have 100% countered a Primal Amulet. Yeah, so I think I just, you know, if I'm going to go for something in that spot, I just need to go for the right thing. But All right, uh, I'll take two questions here while we're just shuffling up for Game uh, 3, I guess. Silmar HS, opinions on an Angel of Grace as a second creature in the Esper deck. It's fine. I don't know if you need a second one. Maybe it's better than Chromium. Might be. But, uh, the card's been relatively strong uh, from what I've seen. I mean, 5-4 Flash Flyer for 5 mana is already a pretty stout body, and then it just has two huge pieces of upside. Does it also have Vigilance? No. No. Okay. What, what are your thoughts on that versus Lyra? They're very different cards, I think. Yeah. I mean, Lyra's a card that if you untap with it and attack with it, in most matchups, the game ends. Well, say, say you're expecting a lot of uh, mono red for week one, right? Yeah, Lear is just would, infinitely would you better. Make that the correct call instead of the the other angel. Like the the saving you for a turn is not the good part of that card. That that ability is the worst ability by a lot. Yes. Um. You know the angel's grace effect. I think that setting your life total to ten is a pretty big deal when you're in some weird racing spots, and also just being a five mana five four flash flyer is is good enough. Um. I think Lyra is pretty much a king or the, the queen of that slot if you're planning on playing against a lot of mono reb because of the static amount of life you gain over time if it survives. And just how it dominates combat. Like it, It's really... It's easy to attack their Angel of Grace after the first turn with that trigger and like force damage through. With Lyre, you, you just really can't. So Lyre can catch you up from really bad uh, board positions too. Charger 6. Pretty good. All right. Keep that one on top. Your turn. Playing Ops. Yep. You wow. Struggling hit lands again? No, I just have a tapped one. I'm just okay. kind of trying to hit a Steam Vents or something. Uh, Playing Ops. Yep. Come on. It re reset. I'm not I'm not playing the rest of this game. My hand is literally all fours. Well, I was gonna I was gonna play this. So I think that was gonna end the game. Sure. With you not having red mana or being able to play a four drop. I'm just gonna untap with multiple counter spells and Yeah. Thief. Two land double op, never hit a land. I I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this spot. I feel like I have to keep that on the play. What else you got, Robert? Frustrating. Well, I actually need some more. Uh, Basket the Gamer, though, wants to know, do you think Galta Primal Hunger will be viable in Standard, and what deck do you think would run it if it is? Talk about cards that are good with Riot. Yeah, Galta 12, is up there. 12-12? 12-12 Haste. So, I think if there's a deck that takes full this advantage of Rhythm of the exactly Wilds and or Domri, um, let's try it again. Sorry. Galta could be a, a big reason why that deck is good, because it just has, giving it Riot is so powerful. Also, do you have any thoughts on uh, like blue a blue green elves deck? Um, people have been asking about that. Why is there blue in the deck? Crassus. Uh, yeah, Crassus. Marwan and Crassus is the big thing, but that to me that just feels worse than just playing like growing rice of Illamok. But people will elf. It's gonna let them elf. And do you perhaps play end raise forerunners in that deck? The smaller greater player. The smaller what now? The end raise forerunners. It's uh, eight mana. For, uh, oh, the cr smaller crater hoof is what you said. Yeah, sorry. I thought I heard smaller cranial plating. Oh. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, you probably don't. I, from the elf decks that I've seen are ones that use like Vanquisher's Banner and the Beast, the four drop. 
and just draw a million cards and yeah. create this huge board state. You don't clan really need... Clan Caller just gets more Clan Caller. You don't really need yeah. the overrun effect from that 8-drop. Yeah, you just end up... Like, if things go well, you just end up with 50 and 5-5s five on the battlefield, and that, that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, I think... Um, Grow Chamber Guardian being an elf gives you another big mana sink, which is important, um, while also just providing you with large amounts yeah. of power. Keeps that stream of threats going in case you hit a patch of lands... How's your okay, the sand is perfectly fine. Okay. We'll scry. Do I need really need to hit land drops or can I hold this? I do think I need to hit land drops with this hand. I'm gonna bottom that, but I'm not sure if that's right. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> mm, yeah, go. Uh, Glacial Fortress search. Yeah, if I had a uh, second land untapped ever in any of these games, I just get to hold up negate onto you instead yeah. of having a main phase and opt. And then I counter your search for scant, and the entire game changes because your hand sucks. But no. My hand's pretty good. Go. Trigger search. That's a land. Yeah, but you need the lands, right? You needed that for your absorb. And now I can't do my thing. I had a third land already, don't worry. I just okay. wanted a fourth land, a fifth land, a sixth land. Probably seventh land. Eighth land. All right, let's just start casting stuff. Um, <laughs> I guess this one. I will negate that one. Your turn. Todd, what's your thought process on which spell to run out in that point? Uh, I think his first one he has to counter if he has a counter. Um, and the second one he might be able to mortify, so I want to lead with this over primal. I also think Primal is just a larger threat over time. They're the they're the two cards are very similar in this matchup in that they both threaten um bursts of either cards or mana, but the burst of cards from Primal is a little bit better. Also, Tom Ross wants to know your thoughts on naming the team of reclamation decks T Rex. <laughs> and Seth swings his insight. Cards in hand? I got three. You know what I said earlier? I'm just throwing it out the window. Just doesn't matter anymore. I'm gonna re regret it. I'm sure. Pass. All right, play not. Yep. And shock primal amulet. Syncopate for three. All right, I will. I'm at 18. I'm gonna negate the syncopate for three. Yeah, screw this game up. Go. Should have syncopated on turn three I, or whatever. I thought maybe I could like catch a chemistry later with the syncopate and it was probably just gonna counter something anyway, so I used the negate, but then instead I like drew into an absorb and then I could like I guess I should have I drew into an absorb, I should have just shocked. I've screwed this game up multiple times. Well yeah. Um I'm gonna keep this um and draw it. I'm gonna try to squeeze this to fairy in and deal with the amulet for at least for a little while. Okay. Pass the turn. Um, crap. You can deal with it, the fairy. All right, I will chemisters and lightning strike this. Okay, your turn. Uh, search. Yeah, I like that one. Um, exile all your chemisters. Play this land, tap to pass. We got Nick Miller in the chat with a question. So, Which card will have more copies in the SCG Indie Top 8? Light up the stage or Wilderness Reclamation? Uh, uh, I'd say light. light up the stage is such an easier way to build your deck. So you go to 23? Yeah. 23 to... I oh, know I shocked one. Oh, you shocked one. You were 21. So you have 21 to 20. Uh, so everybody knows that expansion targeted my absorb, copies it, then he absorbs my absorb effectively. Yep. You got one card in hand? I do. Don't think I need another land at this point, so we'll bin that and transform. Yep. Draw a card. And that's an interesting one. <laughs> you have one in hand? I have one card in hand. Teferi Minus? Or... Yeah, Teferi Minus. You can go. Good. Draw. Yep. 
this. Um, you have no jumpstart cards in your yard, right? That's correct. Your turn. I like that. Uh, plus this fairy. I used the expansion to copy the absorb to resolve the amulet, even though I had a backup amulet. And I, that could have been wrong, but um, okay. Untap two lands on that step and pass the turn. Uh, in response to the untap, sure. Uh, I'm gonna bounce this and draw a card. Um, I think I'm gonna lose this game, but wait, I have no cards in hand. I'm targeting this. Didn't you game. only have three mana? Oh, right, because of the okay. No, so I'm, you have I'm, to do this with the trigger on the stack. Right? Yeah, but then it's just bad. Yeah, because then I get to recast. So you can't do. You can't draw a card. Okay. Um. All right, I'm just gonna bounce the fairy and draw a card. W oh, with the trigger. With the trigger detention on the stack. Uh, sh that's fine. Okay. Okay. Untap two lands. Yep. Pass the turn. I will absorb that one. Yeah, I quit. I don't want to play anymore. Spanish just means really hard after sideboard. Yeah. I, just need, I just need more big, uncounterable threats or really cheap things that he doesn't have answers to. Like, maybe Legion War Boss, maybe just more Niv, maybe uh, just something. I don't know. The the rec deck... Well, once I have a bunch of like good answers, I don't even think Wilderness Reclamation is that important. Yeah, maybe I just have to side it out. Like we talked about how they're like you should have a plan where you're boarding out probably one of one of those. Let's, in game, how much time we we have? We have like time? five minutes, ten minutes. Ten minutes. in game in games that are going to go long. You want to play longer? You can cut reclamation and bring in treasure map and use that to give it a burst of mana yeah. to like win the counter war, but think, also draw cards. Do you, you want to play again? Mm, you sure. If you want to, can we go late? I mean, I've, I'm here till six. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gonna go late. Um, so get your questions well, in, Rob. We're gonna play one more game. I'm going to board out the four rec in this matchup because, huh, yeah, okay. And then we're going to board in the Rowl and three treasure map. We're going to see how this plays. Because you're right, the, the burst of mana from treasure map is, is solid, but also just like the extra cards matter. It's a cheap thing that you have to interact with, which is good. I think the real downside to playing the teamer version versus the band version is that your removal is is not versatile. Like I guess settle the wreckage is not that good, but um, yeah. your lightning strikes have been pretty good. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. But, like Ixon's binding will be pretty good. Yeah, you would like, like it, you would like one clean answer to a Teferi, or maybe an answer to Escanta. You know, you know, I'm excited about the standard format. I don't want to go home right now. Standard open. I don't want to go home right now. I want to keep playing Magic against Ross while we have the decks together in the same room, and I want to figure things out. So you're welcome. He's hooked. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm hooked free on value need more freaking land. Content. I don't know what the heck is going on, man. All right, I'm going to power shuffle. All right, so uh, we have a question here from the Bronze Subligar. How similarly do you rate Light Up the Stage versus Theater of Horrors and ability to provide card advantage in Red Black X decks? That's all you, baby. Or I guess perhaps, I guess, um, Experimental Frenzy should probably be in that conversation as well. Yeah, Frenzy and Theater are pretty comparable cards, whereas Light Up the Stage is a little bit different as this one shot. Um, like Light Up the Stage is a lot better in lists that are trying to trim on lands. It's good to have when you hit that extra land drop that you might need. You can cast it on one mana, um, being the one shot. Experimental Frenzy is, uh, and and to a lesser extent, Theater of Horrors are much better in decks that are built with larger land counts because they provide this huge stream of cards. They essentially tell you, say that you never run out of things to do with your mana, so you might as well have a lot of mana in your deck so that you don't get mana screwed early. So it's hard to like really compare Light Up the Stage on the same axis. They will go into similar decks, but they do fairly different things. Um, I could imagine like mono red decks that are built with 18, 19 lands that play four light up the stage and zero frenzy. Maybe they sideboard frenzy and like go up to 20 and have like two frenzies for 20 lands and they start on 19. I think 20 land frenzy is not good. I've, I've been very happy with 21, 22, but less than that just feels like you're. I want to hit my fourth land drop, you know? Yeah. But Pretty this quick. is. Like 
it's just a different style deck. If you're the the real boss sly style, if Tom's still here, that I I could see that. Granted, in general, card advantage spells, which light up the stage, does count as are cards that encourage you to play more lands because they are negative tempo. So missing a land drop when you already have negative tempo cards in your deck is more punishing, and they give you more things to do with your mana by giving you more total resources. So you need man. Uh, Did you draw? No. Okay, Ross is at twenty three. Yes. Um, I will play a Drowned Catacomb and pass the turn. Play Nox. Sure. I will shock. Go to 18, your turn. That either means chemistries or double negate or, I mean, our life totals are pretty irrelevant, so I think you should be aggressively shocking in this, uh, in these games anyway. Field pass. All right. Syncopate? I do not have the syncopate, so that's going to resolve. I would syncopate this for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think you should for sure. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Go. I have a worse chemistry insight. <laughs> that's fine. I don't need that. no stinking addendum. Yeah, the life is not that relevant. He wants to make sure he can hold up counter spells in the spot. Uh, maybe playing that card was bad because now I want to discard. Oh, yeah, that's a big deal. Or you could just play Teferi and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll discard now. This reborn have or, things yeah. go to radical idea. That's fine. Uh, opt. Yep, or I should tap like this and then opt. I guess opt is better than a random draw. Opt again, keep, untap. Also, Nick Miller is putting in his vote for wanting to see the gate deck on Thursday. See the negate deck? The the gate deck. Treasure map. Uh, I will absorb that. I will fight back, I think. All right, negate. Uh, negate your negate. And I will copy your absorb and negate. Absorb your negate. So you gain six, or no? You only you I gain only three, but you don't you gain, gain yeah. three. So, I'm so you're twenty one. Go. Treasure map resolves. I don't know if that's worthwhile. Your four in hand. I have four in hand. I think I just need a third niv. Maybe board of lands. Yeah, that's the problem. Whenever I friggin' fight over anything, he just gets to play Teferi, and that checks basically whatever I'm doing. So Untap some stuff. Yeah. I even have the Field of Ruin to check the Treasure Cove once that thing transforms, so it's actually not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, go. Upkeep. Strike this. Goes to two. Strike this. You have two cards in your hand. Yeah. I will shock. Yikes. All right, so you're at 21. And play a search. Sure. You can go. Activate treasure map. Yep. Uh, probably should have just cast radical idea. Or no, I want to get this treasure map transformed. I will bottom a radical on tap. We'll scry again, looking for Niv. Chemistry is fine. Go. Keep trigger search. Yeah. Can definitely bend that land to transform. Draw a card. Yeah. Play Drown Catacomb, pass the turn. Uh, chemistry's. Yep. Radical pitching a mountain. Sure. It's not countering radical idea. Just... You got two chemistries in here, right? Yeah. If I recall correctly. Yep. Ooh, and a radical on this side one. Treasure map. Sure. Uh, actually, hold on. Okay. Let's activate the as canta. Sure. Find an absorb and 
absorb that. I go to 24. Negate that. So I mean, having to gate to it could be like sync bait or okay, uh, yeah, go. Okay, now we're looking pretty good. Yeah, Shock myself it just, to it just gets so hard to fight through all the stuff. Like Pass. I think I would actually be fine here if if Field of Ruin didn't exist in or like wasn't in his deck. I think it's a little greedy with Kai's Wrath, but I think that enough people are going to be playing it that it's a reasonable representation. Yeah. It's, it's just another thing that's really hard for me to fight it's against. It's a singleton, too. So. All right. Get three treasures. I will put this on bottom. Let's activate before Todd gets to untap. Find an island. Yeah. Right, so I have three treasures. And I'm going to just move to untap. Yep. You have three cards in hand? That is correct. Active search for a scanza. It's not good. Yeah, I, I think I just need to f not fight over stuff early if I can help it because the, the turn where I fought over treasure map, I just lost the game, you know? Because it wasn't even that good. All right. Um, primal amulet. Uh, okay, activate his canta. Uh -huh. Disdainful stroke. Somebody's got a good one. Yeah, I have an explosion. So I can just try to go for that and draw five cards, or I can protect Primal Amulet, or I can draw four cards and play around uh, Sink Bait. Sink Bait. All right. Uh, she for four and draw four. Yep. I'm at 18. Let's see, one treasure left. And so this thing's getting countered. Stainful stroke resolves. All right, uh, go. Uh, shock myself to sixteen. Okay, pass the turn. Yeah, I should activate this main. Sure. I'm finding an absorb. Um. Hmm. So I have two chemistries, I think. Three, maybe. Two chemistries, one radical. I will pass turn. I basically have to overload Ross's mana at this point, uh, since he has the absorb, and uh, I'm not going to do that with pass. my current hand. I will chemistry. I'm pitching a lightning strike. Uh, yep. Okay. Draw two. Um, Chemister pitching a Hinterland Harbor. Yep. Yep. Go. And a turn as Kanta. Sure. So this is the part of the game where I think I just steal when I should not have been even remotely in it. And I think that just is the strength of Niv. And I think maybe that just means my sideboard plan needs to involve a lot of Niv. And treasure map maybe whatever. The third the route is at Viceroy should just be a third Niv for starters. Four, five, maybe three Niv, one Rao is the right eight, configuration. Twelve. 12 mana. Have you at 16? Is that right? Excellent binding. I will go for a negate trigger niv. We've been, we about to build a stack. <laughs> Absorb trigger niv. All right, for this trigger will resolve. Yep. I'll do one to you. 15. You 15. 
Um, I will go copy absorb trigger. So this has one trigger on this. Or sorry, one. You have two. You, we've resolved this one. Yeah, so it's just yours that are on the stack. On the stack. Absorb. All right, so resolve that one. 14. One to you. I will negate that absorbed trigger niv. That's a third, and then I'll syncopate your negate for one. All right, so I'll draw off the yep. niv. I go to 13. Uh, that all happens. You gain six. six you go but to take 20, three. And then well, I, go, go I went to 13, I'll I'm, syncopate. Yeah, I'm then 19. I'm, I'm at 16. You, you, you forgot the one off syncopate, brought me to 13. These are going to bring me to 19, and then you have to resolve three okay. more. So what are you at? I'm at 16. I'm at 16. 16, I draw three cards. Yes. And then Niv goes under binary. Yes. And that negates exiled, but I sure, don't sure, sure. know if that matters. Okay. So we've dealt with that, and Niv is under binding, so Todd can't cast another one unless he has a second bounce spell, which would be bad. But Second bounce spell? Oh, yeah. So I yeah used you already mind. used a blink. Of, oh, maybe that was last game. I don't know. But you're also. Todd's also just so far ahead on cards at this point that I'm very. I'm dying. All right. I'm going to play two prime on you. So go. That one, uh, that one explosion with, that he had as his last card when I countered an amulet was enough to get me. Maybe I was supposed to let that amulet resolve, but he had enough stuff in the graveyard to power that amulet, so I don't think I can. And he wisely played around the syncopate, which I did have at that point. If you had just tapped out, you'd have lost the game. On the spot. Deputy of Detention, please. Um... Uh, activate as Kanta. Yep. Oh, I had a, this land to play last turn to you. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Teferi. That will resolve. I will. I don't think dealing with one actually does anything. What do what you... You have a radical? You just have a radical in here? But you have, what, like six million cards in hand? Seven. You have seven cards in hand. You are down to one explosion. Well, one is all you need when you have these amulets. Um, I think I need to find... The uh, thing is, these things are transforming next turn. It's guaranteed. So I'd have to literally draw a deputy of detention right now and have Todd not have, a, not have a lightning strike, which is one. I guess you're also down to one lightning strike. So maybe you don't have it. We got three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen cards in the deck, which is enough. Um. Okay, I'll minus on one of them. All right, in response. I'm going to... Chemisters for two. Yep. Um, it's fine. Pass. In your turn, you have four up. Uh, blink the binding trigger. In response, I will consecrate the chemisters. Actually, yeah, comma, yeah. Sure. Don't you just want to make me try to sack my niv? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess that's probably better. Okay. Yeah, you can... Well, that ruins it, because now... I... Are you just going to die? I mean, I was almost 100% going to cast a Radical idea, so that's awkward. Okay, just that. Hmm. It's so much stuff. I don't know, man. Because I have another Blink in hand to protect my Niv. So, like, I now I just... Mm, mm, fine, mm. whatever. You know the, you, I don't know you have that. You know this is a sorcery, right? 
You're talking I about the not. consume half? I did not. Yeah. I thought it was an instant. I okay. I changed everything. My bad. When you said, like, make me sack my oh, nib, I thought okay. you were like, make you answer it because I'm going to deck you. No. Okay. Do you want to still... Yeah, yeah the consume half is a sorcery. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so let's just will... take the... And this is in response to this yeah. is still under binding? Sure. Okay. All right, that so thing's this comes fine. in and still under turn. Uh, radical idea, trigger, trigger. You're going to deal one to ferry at all or just two upstairs? You can probably steal two upstairs. I'm just going to try to kill you. Yeah. Because like if, if Todd realizes he's going to come up short, he can just aim one point later at this Teferi. So I'm at 14 from that Radical and the draw off Niv is it. So draw for turn 13. Yeah, I shocked aggressively this game, figuring I had answers to Niv is it, and that might cost me, but I think I'm dying to this Niv is it anyway. Primal Amulet. Uh, let's play Radical Idea. 3, 6, 9, 12. So, you're drawing two and shooting me for two. I go to 11. Yep. Uh, let's attack for five. I go to six. Uh, let's go. I think I have another radical. Uh, discard this. So, that gets me to four. Yeah, and then I'll lightning strike you with a copy. And that's deal seven. Yeah, impressive. I think is the right word. Well, it, in these games now, like you had treasure maps and Niv and right and Not Ral, reclamation, all of which caught, caught instead of reclamation. And in game two, it was like the two reclamations I let resolve, and I countered everything else. If I had two extra, if I had one extra counter spell for that explosion on four, uh, I probably win the game going away. So it was just about increasing threat density, and, and things turned around. We okay. may be figuring it out. Yeah, we're doing it. Cyborg plans a plenty. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little tapped here. This is pretty draining. We ended up playing like 15 games or something. So that was, yeah, I was including the two dud games where I just got stuck yeah. on one or two lands or whatever, and we just keep them up. Anyway, Played a lot of games. Uh, we questions. Of... Two questions, and then we're done. Uh, we are we struggling on the question front? Well, a, a lot of them are just uh, somewhat similar. Sure, sure. Um, Headward MTG, uh, Todd. What do you feel like your worst matchup is going to be? Um, I mean, I think it's not any one particular matchup. I think it's just people who sideboard in such a way where they have an abundance of disenchants that bust up my engine, as well as uh, a lot of interaction that uh, is not creature based. You know, like the the duresses negates out of the Golgari slash uh, Soul Tide deck was fairly problematic. Uh, seven cheap ways to interact with me while also putting pressure on me was a little too much to handle. But it could be that I just need to to build my deck in such a way where I can have um, some some reasonable size sweepers or something. Or I don't know. Uh, one card that I actually kind of thought I might want is um, what's the one side of bounce all the permanents? Rivers Rebuke. Yeah, Rivers Rebuke just to buy me a turn, but that might just be worse than just playing Nexus of Fate. Um, the the problem is not any one deck. It's just the cards that people bring from the decks. And if people want to hate out something like this, they more than likely can because every deck can splash color. Um, you know, normally Mono Red wouldn't be able to handle something like this if it's too fast, um, but they have the ability to just splash green for uh what's the enchantment that's like deals one for each instance cinder vines cinder vines seems like it's pretty good against me deals with my artifacts enchantments while also just like punishing me for playing a bunch of instant sorceries like you know it, it's it's card types of cards people bring not any one particular matchup it's also the combination of those disruptive elements with pressure so i i mean i played seven counter spells probably over the course of that game maybe more but there was no really no pressure on Todd at any point, so he, he was able to just grind through it. Especially with all of the jumpstart cards, there's a hard it's hard for this deck to flood. He's constantly have have more gas going, uh, and was able to finally just wear me down. Resolve the one spell through my syncopate uh, to, that put him up a few cards, and then that snowballed super quickly. So um, the the combination of those good disruptive elements with pressure and finding the the right combination for whatever deck you you are playing because there are good disruptive elements and good ways to apply pressure in basically every color combination mm -hmm. you just have to find them cinder vines thrashing brontodon and green and red um 
Even yeah. main deck Reclamation Sage or Knight of Autumn is something yeah. that I think should be seeing an uptick. Yeah. Rex Sage, Knight of Autumn. Mortifies uh, are really annoying. Mortify, Ixlon's Binding, Conclave Tribunal, a lot of white aggressive decks. We know Duress and Negate are great, so you know, just find the ones that are good and make sure you can apply some pressure. I think more like Thief of Sanity kind of cards out of this deck sideboard could help in this matchup a lot. Uh, just something to poke away, even if they have some some lightning strikes. Okay, uh, two more. Um, all right, so we've had a bunch of questions um, of, about why not, why don't you play any more creatures, uh, say like Carnage Turrets in the sideboards or Hydroid Crassies? I mean, first of all, the 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 main deck is is this really hardcore uh, shell that if you mess too much with it, it starts to fall apart. Like you saw, like one game I mulligans, I drew two primal amulets and a wilderness reclamation, but like no instants and sorceries to go with them, and I didn't do anything. Like I just died to a bunch of a mishmash of creatures from the Golgari deck, and. Um, so when you start to put stuff like Carnage Tyran or Hydroid Crassus, like you need to make concessions. I mean, you saw in that last game we just played where I sideboarded in such a way where I was able to take out Wilderness Reclamation because I had too many sources of mana and not enough sources of raw card advantage or pressure. And something like Treasure Map combined with Niv um, is better against the Esper Strat uh, than just a single Wilderness Reclamation. Like there was one game where I resolved two Wilderness Reclamations and those giant bursts of mana did nothing when my only thing to do with it was uh, uh, one expansion explosion, like one big effect. And if Ross just had the one counter spell for it, I was dead. And he had two counter spells pretty regularly. So uh, it's it's all about finding the balance. As far as cyborg plans are concerned, I I think there's there is probably a, a you know an argument to be made to to be bringing in a Carnage Tyrant, but I don't think Carnage Tyrant is better than Niv Mizzet. The fact that it's uncountable yeah. is a huge deal. Uh, how many creatures uh, do you really want or need? Like, do you, we have two Nimbus, Ral is another threat in that vein. Like, do you need four or five of that kind of effect when you have so much velocity? So many, like, you're going through 40 cards almost every game. Do you, I don't think you need that many, and I think Nimbus is the best option. Maybe you want a third Nimbus instead of the Ral or a Carnage Tyrant in that spot. I don't know. I you mean, can, I. I don't think you want Karshan over Niv. Like Niv just yeah. works so well with your deck, and any matchup where you're wanting to bring in an uncounterable threat, Niv is going to serve you better because all their removal is going to be gone. Yeah, and even if it's not, like them killing the first Niv if you have access to three is not a huge deal. Like you usually get to play an opt in response and draw an extra card. You draw a card off the thing that kills it. If they, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I probably need some like disenchants or whatever for Ixon's binding, but the, my sideboard is going to change a lot. I learned a lot today playing against three different archetypes, the three pillars. I know, I know now that like I can maybe shave a little bit against these red decks, and I can maybe um, come harder in the sideboard for things like control or mid range. And it's just going to be uh, me figuring out the the right cards in the right orders. Yeah, you know. I I also think Niv Mizzet relative to the other options for that kind of role is a lot better against the mid range and aggressive decks if you want it in those matchups but for its ability to uh, affect the battlefield and just ping down a bunch of creatures. And in those matchups, you're going to want the burst of mana. Niv Mizzet plays super well with Wilderness Reclamation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and th those decks are going to want to bring in some reactive answers to your main engine, which means they're cutting way down on creature removal, which makes niv -Mizzet even better as well. And if they have to leave in some creature removal for niv -Mizzet and bring in their disenchant effects or, dis or negates or duresses, all those things, then their deck is suddenly way less aggressive and you're under a lot less pressure and you're just going to win a longer game anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I think niv -Mizzet plays that spot wonderfully and I don't think you need any more. Yeah. Um, someone said about... Uh, three weeks ago when I started talking about Warner's Reclamation and Primal Amulet, that in two weeks, I would cut Primal Amulet for Niv-Mizzet main deck. They might be right. Yeah. <laughs> but Primal Amulet looked stellar. And and I don't know if maybe it's just there's too much going on with Wilderness Reclamation and Primal Amulet together, but every game where I played one into the other, I'm pretty sure I won. Like, you know, the, the it's peanut butter and jelly, baby. You know? They're both pretty good on their own, but when you put them together... That's another good name for that magic. deck. Peanut butter jelly time. PBJ. Yeah, PBJ. That's the new name name of the deck. Change it right now, Rob. Do I'll, it. I'll do that. Okay. okay. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, before we go, I, I just want to talk a little bit about cyborg theory. Okay? Because this is something that, that really hit home to me in, in cyborging this last game. And that 
just because your deck is centered around something doesn't mean that it needs to be in your deck at all times. You know, like my deck is kind of centered around Wilderness Reclamation, but we recognize that in this matchup, it was the worst engine of the all the options that I could have because it did not generate card advantage. And when we're trading one for ones with negates, having these weird counter wars, Wilderness Reclamation, yeah, if I get to un, if I get one in play and everything's going smoothly, great. But if we're trading, 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 and then I land a Wilderness Reclamation, it doesn't actually do anything. It's just again a giant battery, and you need ways to utilize that extra mana. And if you don't have enough chemisters insights, or they get exiled with your spell, um, whatever yeah. it's called, you that, know that, that quick burst of mana becomes less relevant as the game goes along. Yeah. Like your your normal plan is to play this reclamation early and use that burst of mana to bury your opponent. Yeah. But control decks are very very good at stopping that from happening, and so you need to shift against them and say, okay, well I'll just uh, outgrind you in a long game. And in that case, quick bursts of mana are things that you end up cutting. You know, there, there are some times where you're playing against control is to like win a counter war over a key threat in the mid game. And then some early ramp is good because it sets you up to win that counter war. But here we're playing for a really long game. Almost every game went 30, uh, 40 cards deep into your deck. So you're going to make 10, 12, 15 land drops over the course of a game. And once that happens, like it's that's your wilderness reclamation. They're giving it to you for free. Yep. So you don't need to generate it yourself. It was kind of like the the problem with uh, Azor's Gateway, in my opinion, was that when you were like the best part of Azor's Gateway was the looting effect, being able to to pitch uh, like redundant removal um, or just like in matchups where removal was dead, being able to get rid of it was really important for the the Jeskai control decks in the early starts of last season. But then people realize, you know, the that's just a worse engine than like uh, something like treasure map in a niv mizzet like that that two two one two punch was just so much better than azor's gateway because the backside of azor's gateway is yes it says win the game but usually it's like you're already so far ahead you've had so much time to transform this card that you should win anyway it's just training wheels you know and yeah. um and i you know it's, it's just interesting to see like you know the wilderness reclamation in some matchups just does the same thing like it, the front half of Wilderness Reclamation is like the back half of Azor's Gateway, and it, like when it just generates a ton of mana, it's it's not as potent, but you know it's the same theory applies. You know yeah. that's not the important part in some matchups. Yeah, uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, if you're playing this Reclamation deck against Mono Red Aggro, Wilderness Reclamation is one of your most important cards right. because they're not cutting you, they're not disrupting you very much, if at all. They're not cutting you off of your big spells, so your first big spell is going to be good. But you need to make sure you can get to it, and that requires ramp. So we're, reclamation is always going to stay in there. Whereas, uh, and it, it, show, it goes to show you how aggro decks and control decks are inverted in that way. One of them is giving you time, but sh trying to fight you on the axis of cutting you off of all of your big spells and just run you out of threats. So you need to take out your cards that ramp you because you don't because you have the time to just make your land drops normally and bring in more threats mm -hmm. the other thing is ignoring your threats and just trying to take away the time from you so you need to bring in cards that give you more time that is cheap interaction and uh leaving all four copies of your reclamation and you probably trim on some number of threats maybe you trim a, a explosion in that matchup probably not that one but like i don't know no, you, I mean, you probably like trim a chemistry's inside or something in that matchup yeah. I mean, you, you can trim i mean th th there are worse cards i think but i think that is just because the deck is not even remotely perfect, you know, like th there's a chance that my deck looks 15 cards different this weekend, let alone like I think, I think a you've month said that right after now. every video where you've played that deck. It's been like 10 well, cards different every time. And then I mean, it has been 10 cards different every you time. You know, I mean, sometimes I'm coiling, sometimes I'm lightning striking, sometimes I'm neither. I'm root snaring. And then, you know, sometimes I'm playing Prime Amulet, sometimes I'm playing Niv Mazet, sometimes my sideboard has completely different set of cards where the completely different set of sideboard plans. So it's just, it's so cool to me how, uh, just this deck's able to fluctuate between different builds so easily. And just, it's, it's just so interesting to try to figure out, um, like the right configuration. It's just, I'm having so much fun. Sure. You well, play again, no game. No, okay. I'm, no we're, we're we gotta we gotta head out. We're gonna be back here on Thursday where we reverse rolls. I'm gonna be bringing the deck that is my front runner for Indianapolis this weekend. Todd will be bringing three decks that he thinks are gonna represent the predicted metagame. Things might change in the next two days. You never know. We're gonna yeah. keep getting more information each day. Uh, so, uh, uh, would you be mad if I? Just Broad team of reclamation. I mean, if it was one of your three, I think that's fine. I, a lot of people, I think, are going to bring it. I think it's going to be. 
I, I might bring a Bant one because I think yeah. people are way higher on Bant right now than a Teamer. But, yeah. uh, but if you brought, just, I, I'm definitely, the Reclamation is definitely one of the things that I'm targeting and, and is in my head as I'm building for week one. So yeah. uh, we're going to reverse rolls and do this again on Thursday. And then on Friday, we're going to hit the road early in the morning, get to Indianapolis. Get some uh, Ale Emporium. Heck yeah. And then uh, be prepared for week one of Ravnica Allegiance Standard. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. you can make it down there for the Open or the various classics that are going on. Uh, should be a great time. Indy's a great city. If not, as we said in the intro, you can catch all the action right here at twitch.tv slash SCG Tour starting at 1030 Eastern Time with, we got Cedric, we got Patrick. We also got the debut, Brian Gottlieb and Jared Thompson yeah. in the booth. So two great teams should be an awesome time watching from home as well as in the city itself. So and I'm yep. sure we'll start with a round one Todd Anderson feature match. You better, because I ain't got no buys. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing some kooky stuff, no matter what, even if I'm not... Okay, there, there's like a 20% chance that I don't play a Wilderness Reclamation deck because I just can't figure it out. And I just default to the this, this v, the guy who's the, the leader on MTGO trophies right now is VTCLA. He has this really sweet, um, like, a, uh, I don't know what to call it, status... Chain Whirler deck or Status Red. I, I, I like to call it Status Red. Um, but it uses Chain Whirler plus Status, but it's like this big red deck. Rick's Mighty Reveler, Chain Whirler, Rekindling Phoenix. And it just looks really sweet. And he's like got like two or three trophies with it already. Deck looks really sweet. Um, I might bring that as one of my picks for, for Thursday. So make sure to check that out. We're going to be bringing that here. But if I ain't on camera, Nick's fired. You know, <laughs> I ain't got much cool around here anymore, but I got that. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Cedric will be free to be on too. Yeah, be yeah. careful, Nick. No, I mean I'm sure I'm just gonna mulligan to five in game three and get clowned. So okay. my next gonna do a cool thing one of the three games, and that's honestly good that's enough. All, that's all you can ask for. Going down to history, best of SCG live explosion for thirty six on turn six. Nick says five. try me. Try you? Okay. Yeah, now you're all spiting right. him. He, he might put you a backup camera just to spite you then. All right. Well, thanks okay. for watching uh, Versus Live from StarCGames.com. We appreciate y'all being out here. We'll see you Thursday, 1 p.m., same bat time, same bat channel. See you later.